All right, this video is going to take you through the rest of the study guide for um, chapter two, which is on transformations. So um, we are leaving off with number 10. So if you look at number 10, it says rotate the triangle 90 degrees about the origin and find the coordinates of the image. Now it's missing one piece of information. It tells you we're going to rotate at 90 degrees, but it doesn't tell you which direction. So I want you to write in here that we're going to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. So if you remember, that's the direction the clock goes. That's to the right. Okay. Now we took our transparency. We laid it down over this graph. Okay. Trace the x-axis, trace the y-axis, and then trace your triangle here. Okay. Now I also want you to make sure you label these points A, B, and C so that when we rotate it, you know exactly where A prime, B prime, and C prime should be located. Okay? So, once you get that traced onto a transparency, you're going to take your transparency and move it 90 degrees. So, remember, 90 degrees is one turn, and clockwise is to the right. All right? So, what you should end up with is A prime right here, B prime will be right here, and then C prime will be right here. Now they don't just want you to draw it, they want you to um, find the coordinates of the image. So A prime is located at 1, negative 1. You go right 1 and then down 1. B prime is located at 4, negative 1, so you go right 4 and then down 1, and C prime is located at 1, negative 3, so you go right 1 and down 3, and then this would be your final answer. Not only do you graph the new image, but you also need to label what the new coordinates would be of A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay, so that finishes up the first page. Now, flipping over to the back, number 11. Directions for 11 and 12 just simply say, tell whether the two figure, figures are similar and explain your reasoning. So, in order to know for a fact if two shapes are similar, you have to set up a proportion and then cross multiply. Okay, so you may want to make that note right there. Um, kind of maybe by the directions, okay? So for our proportion, if you remember in class, I said that whenever you set these up, if you just have your first fraction come from the first shape and the second fraction come from your second shape, it'll set you up perfectly. So for the first shape, I could either do 8 over 5 or I could do 5 over 8. It does not matter how you set up the first one. So let's say I do 8 over 5. Then whenever I go to set up the second one, now the order matters because you have to look. Since I put the 8 as the numerator, what side corresponds with the 8? And that's actually going to be the 6. So it would have to line up with the 8. So we have 6 over 4. Now, cross multiply. You're going to multiply diagonally. 6 times 5 is 30. And then the other one, 8 times 4, is 32, okay? And you're looking to see, are these two numbers equal to each other? And 30 does not equal 32. So your answer for number 11 would be no, they're not similar, because 30 does not equal 32. They are not proportional, okay? And then you're showing your work there would help back up your explanation as well, okay? Number 12 is going to be the exact same setup. Now, if you notice on number 12, um, they give you all of the sides of the triangles. You only need to pick two of them, obviously, to set up your fraction, but they can be any two that you want. So, let's say for the bigger triangle, we use 10 over 20. Now, if I do that, you want to look at what corresponds with 10, and that would be 6. And then what corresponds with 20? That would be 12. And then cross multiply, again, just like we did on 11. So 20 times 6 
is 120. And then 10 times 12 is 120. Yes, those are equal to each other. So for number 12, yes, those are similar because 120 equals 120. They are proportional. Okay, so again, you can't just tell just by looking at two shapes if they're similar. You've got to set up a proportion with the lengths of the sides and then cross multiply to see if they equal each other. Okay. All right, this problem right here should be number 13. It got cut off for some reason. Okay. So on 13 and 14, it tells you the two figures are similar. Okay. Find the ratios small to large of the perimeters and of the areas. So I'm going to put perimeter, P for perimeter, and A for area. Okay. Now, perimeter is very, very simple. All it is is just the ratio of the two lengths of the sides. That's it. Now, since it says do small to large, you have to do the smaller one first. So for perimeter, your ratio will just simply be 3 eighths, and we're done. Okay. Now, whenever you go to do the ratio of the areas, you're going to take that same fraction, but now we are going to square it. So this will become 3 squared over 8 squared. And remember, whenever you square something, you are multiplying it by itself. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 8 times 8 is 64. So that would be your ratio for the areas. So there's my two answers right there. Okay, same type of thing on 14. We're looking at the ratios of the perimeters and of the areas. Okay, and still small to large. So for perimeter, we just write it simply how it is in the drawing, 6 over 10. And you could simplify that, but I'm not going to make you do that for this purpose. Okay, then for the area, we're going to take that same ratio, but now we're going to square it. So we have 6 squared over 10 squared, and 6 times 6 is 36. 10 times 10 is 100. So there's your ratio for the areas of those two parallelograms. Okay, so again, perimeter is just the ratio straight as it is in the picture. Area, the ratio, you have to square those numbers, and then you get your um, ratios for the areas. Okay, now moving on to number 15. This is one that we haven't really talked about much in class, but it's a very simple um, process. It says figure A is a dilation of figure B by a scale factor of 4. So it got bigger, it got 4 times bigger. What is the scale factor of figure B to figure A? So you're basically going backwards, okay, and I want you to make this little note. Okay, to go backwards, all you have to do is flip the fraction. So the um, scale factor that they gave us was 4 as a fraction. That's 4 over 1. So flip it, you get 1 fourth, and that's your answer. It is as simple as that. Okay, moving on to number 16. Okay, we have a map of your neighborhood represented on this uh, coordinate plane. So part A says, describe a translation of your walk from your house to school. So we are starting at your house and we are transitioning and going down to the school. They want to know the translation, basically directions, how would you get there, okay? So if we go diagonally, we haven't learned yet to how to find the distance of that diagonal. So they just simply want to know um, north, south, east, west. But you can just use up, down, left, right. Okay. So if I start at my house, okay, and you can either go down first or left, doesn't matter. So I would go down, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five down. And then I would go one, two, three three, four, five, six, seven, 
left. And again, you could flip that around and say seven left and then five down. It'd be the same thing. But that's your translation to get from your house to your school. Okay? Now, part B says the pizza parlor is a reflection in the x-axis of your school. What are the coordinates of the pizza parlor? So, if it's a reflection of the x-axis, your x-axis is the horizontal axis right here. Okay, so we have to reflect over that line. So we're talking about your school. So if you notice, your school is one, two, three below the line. So whenever we ref reflect, we're going to go one, two, three above the line. So I want you to put a dot right there and label it pizza. But they want to know the coordinates. Okay, so that would be at negative three positive three. Make sure you put those in parentheses. Okay. And then finally for this one, part C says the transformation from your house to the park is a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. What are the coordinates of the park? Okay. So your house is right here. We need to go 90 degrees. That's one turn counterclockwise that's to the left so whenever you trace this onto your transparency you'll trace your x-axis your y-axis and I would just put a dot right where your house is okay and once you have that traced we're gonna go one turn so you're gonna turn your transparency this way counterclockwise one turn okay make sure you still line up your axes and you're going to end up right up here. So I want you to put a dot there and label it park. And then they want to know the coordinates. So that would be at negative 2, positive 4. Okay. So that completes 16. All right. And then number 17 says the scale on a map is one inch is 50 miles. The actual distance between two cities is 400 miles. What is the distance between the cities on the map? Okay, so again, we want to set up a proportion for this one. Okay, so the first thing they give me is one inch is 50 miles. That's going to be my first fraction. Okay, equals... The other piece they give me is 400 miles. Now you have to line up miles with miles, inches with inches. And I want to know how many inches it would represent on the map. So that's going to be my X. And then just like we did up on, um, I think it was 11 and 12, cross multiply. So 50 times X is 50 X. 400 times 1 is 400. To get that x by itself, divide by 50 on both sides, so x equals 8. So on the map, that would represent 8 inches. Okay. <clears throat> and then I had you cross out 18. We didn't worry about doing that one. Okay. So like I told you in class, um, if you know how to work through the problems on this study guide, then you're going to be set for your test. So, and these videos should help you out quite a bit if you forgot how to do something.